Good morning. Peace Tough Church, good morning. Everyone's ready, big smiles on their faces for a great Sunday. Good morning. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and make your ways perfect before him and he shall be your everlasting light have a great day we have birthdays we want to celebrate three of them today Lori Shank this is her name sign was yesterday her birthday was yesterday and Davy Olson his birthday was also yesterday and Jeff Irvin and his birthday will be tomorrow happy birthday to all three of you Uh, does anyone have any announcements? John has an announcement. He'd like to come up. Good morning, everyone. <coughs> On Saturday, we'll have DJ's Breakfast Club. And that'll be held at the Mason Jar Restaurant. The address is 1565 Cliff Road, not far from here. It's between, uh, let's see, it's between Lifetime and the Holiday. And that will be at 9 o'clock. And the DMCR, Deaf Men's Christian Retreat. That will be held in May. Looking for the dates. Let's see. May 1st, more, May 4th, 5th, and 6th. No, May 5th, 6th, and 7th. That weekend, the May 5th of 7th. We would love to see you there at the Men's Deaf Retreat. At the Dem DMCR. And here's a flyer if you want more information. Thank you. And that will be the retreat. Okay, other announcements. Julie has one. She'll come on up. Good morning, everyone. Happy to see you yesterday in White Bear Lake at the DCLC. I hope you enjoyed it yesterday. And today, what's up with the snow? Where is spring? Well, spring is coming. Spring rains. Shannon likes the snow, okay. Because you don't drive, Shannon. I have to drive. <laughs> it doesn't matter, you say? Okay. <laughs> All right. I do have an announcement first. Fingers crossed. I want to help you keep it private. Recently found out. I want to pray for a family, for a couple at this time. She's been going through a lot. So let's send our support and love to her. And they are grieving right now for a loss at surgery. And so pray for those two, please. And next, I want you to sign up. We've had a few people sign up this week. That's great. But we want more people to sign up. If you plan to go, please sign up. So we know a head count. It's important to know the head count. So I hope to see more people signing up for the women's retreat, which is June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And that's in Plymouth. It'll be at the hotel. And we're going to have Veronica Talbot will be the speaker. And if you have any questions, no? Okay, thank you. That's it. All right, I think that's it for announcements. And now we'll have our worship music.
Okay, now we have prayer requests. If you want to write, jot, jot down your prayers, we'll collect those. that we have. So Clim is sick this morning and didn't come, so we want to pray for his recovery and health, if you know. And the music really matches the prayers. Next is our love offering. All right, let us pray. Father, thank you for what you do. You know what our prayers are. You know our health. You know what we're here. We pray for you to be with us. We feel your love as we come today to worship you. Please, we'll receive your message. Please touch our hearts. Touch the world because you know you have a perfect plan. We surrender to you. We are saved. Thank you for eternal love. Amen.
Good morning. I hope that all of you had a good Easter, Resurrection Day. However you want to sign Easter, there's many different signs that we learned last week. I hope you had time together for your family. All right, perfect. And today we'll receive a message. Remember before, we were celebrating... And now we want to talk about how we can continue that celebration. And how or can't. That's up to you. How we can continue to keep that celebration. That's today's sermon. Oftentimes we face a lot of temptation. Right? We do. There's been times you can think of it and we resist that temptation. We stand strong. And we have to continue to believe in what? With Jesus, right? With Jesus in our heart or with something, with love, something. With your eyes as we look up to him, with something. We can have that personal relationship with our Father. Now, are you ready to receive his word? Should I walk away? You guys just want, you want to be done for the day? No. Anyone guess what today's sermon is? Anyone want to take a guess? Just jump ahead. You're welcome to come up here and preach if you like. Okay, the first picture. Ready to get your minds thinking. Might be easy today. Might be hard. I'm not sure. Here we go. Okay. Someone said heart. Say salvation. Depending on what you're thinking and you're imagining, but the heart looking to God. Two thumbs up. Lifting your heart to God. Good. Anyone else? Being saved. Salvation. Keeping your heart pure and connected to him. Uh, Facebook says accepting Jesus in your heart. Jesus' blood covers our sins, washes them away. Good. Wow. I picked the right picture today. You have so many different perspectives. That's so great. It's beautiful to see that. All right. The next picture. Are you ready? All right. Growing in the Lord, becoming closer to God. Good. Others? Three times the love, changing your heart, focusing on him. Growth, your heart is growing. Good. Blood on the cross. Blood on the cross. Your heart is full. Good one. Growing love. Growth in love. Good. Any others? Okay, wow. This is easy. I can see it's very clear. No problems today. <laughs> Plant the seeds of love that will grow. Okay. The next picture. <laughs> friends. Love between friends. Companionship. Love. Love one another. Good. Being together in prayer and worship. Good. Other comment? Supporting each other. Good. Different? Peace, 
friendship. Good one. That's an online comment. Any more? Enjoying the view and feeling that connection to God. Different re perspectives. Together and sisters of the Lord. Together and brothers, too. This one is with women, but right. Friendship. Other comments? Friends enjoying God's creation. Beautiful. The waves on the beach. Yeah, good. Now, these three pictures, many of you had really good responses. You've probably figured out the theme to today's sermon. What do you think it is? Love? Friendship? It's a very simple. Remember last week during Easter, we were celebrating and rejoicing and being joyful. And then we talk about how do we continue this? So let's look to see what today's theme is. Growing in love. And that will be based on 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, the message of growing in love. I'll give you time to go ahead and read it. It's just one slide today. It's not eight. So you'll be happy to see it's just one slide. Are you excited, right? I've given you a break today. Shannon's like, no, no, bring it on. Okay, this verse says, We thank God for you always. And that's what we should, what we should do. Because you give us good reason to be thankful. Your faith is growing more and more. And the love every one of you has for each other is also growing. So we tell the other people of God how proud we are of you. It doesn't matter how you're being persecuted and are suffering many troubles. You see the word growth and we cherish each other it means you know with Easter when it's finished okay that's it time to leave moving on no we continue that love and we have faith and trust and this is a reminder as we're thinking about being gratitude and we're thankful we said what we were thankful for it's beautiful here on earth. Beautiful people. Good lives. Being thankful. What else are we thankful for? The food we receive. Delicious food. Where does that come from? Him. Thank you. For shelter. Right. And whatever the worries are, God is with us always by our side. What we do, we pray. We continue to pray for that. Just continue to give our thanks. We we're taught by our parents when we were small. What do we tell? Say thank you. That's what we're taught. We say thank you to our Father, to God. We are His children. 
And so we, I wanted to explain that we need to continue in our spiritual growth, in our daily lives, to hold on and trust and continue to grow with God. We come to church. That means we're continuing to grow, right? We read the Bible. We seek to understand. And we grow together. And God will never leave us. He never is astray. He cherishes each of you. Now, I recently said that we often face temptations in our daily lives. Is that easy? No, it's hard. Right? It's hard to face these temptations sometimes. Some of you are on the road. You might be speeding a little bit. Are we following the rules? Are we obeying God? If we're going a little too fast, oh, it's easy. Should we let off the brakes and be careful? Pay attention to what we're seeing. It's not easy. Last Friday, I noticed there were more cops on the highway during the weekend. I was like, oh, okay. We can't fall asleep. We have to continue to grow and pay attention. And God says, wait, come on, wake up. With our trust in God, it's the same. We have to follow and continue to grow. And we are developing, providing, saying we are willing in our lives. It's not easy. We need to develop that love, that spiritual growth. It becomes harder, that connection. We say we have to be a good Christian. But how can we show that, that we are good Christians? How do we show that? How do we, we reflect God? It's clear. We have to do our part. It's not easy. We talk about our religion, our beliefs. We can get ridiculed for that. People can insult us for our beliefs. We need to try to be in his image, to live in his image, but that's not easy all the time, right? So today... In this kind of situation, Paul wrote that. He wrote a letter to a group, the Thessalonians, that group of people. And Paul, he emphasized, he really wanted to clarify growing in faith and how that's connected growth and love with others. Not just one relationship, your growth with God. No, that connection needs to extend outward to others. Because we see God. We see his image in all of us. We can't shun people and just say, okay, it's you and I, God. I only see you. But we see God in all of us. We love God means we need to love each of us. We need to love each other the same, and that can be hard. When you might be fighting or having a conflict with someone, how do you love that person? How? Yeah, forgiveness, right? Right. And we can we have our spiritual faith and spread that those relationships with each other. We develop it right here in church to be able to spread it to others. There's a lot of possibilities that we can make that connection to each other and to God. And that transformation is best. When we see him, we want to make that relationship better with God. It starts here. If we have a conflict, we need to solve it, to continue. Someone prefers a word, two letters, 
what are they? Always says hi. She always says hi, smiling. And how does that make you feel when she says hi, when Shannon says hi? Good, right. You feel a little bit better about yourself, about life. You have that relationship with the Shannon. And that shows love. You give that back too, right? The Shannon's always smiling and saying hi to people. That love spreads. Now keep in your mind. Make sure you have Jesus in your heart. Jesus is also God. Jesus is God. With God on earth, with God's creation, Jesus is here on earth forever. We see everything because of God's design. God knows us. Now we rejoice. Are we done after last week? No. Every day we continue. Every, not just every Sunday, but every day. Whether it's an email, whether it's on the phone, on the radio. Maybe old-fashioned writing a letter. That's my way. Write a letter, send it to share that love. I remember passing notes. I missed that time. Many of you remember those days. It's online too. Now, I want to expand on one part, what you'll see in yellow. Now it says in yellow, it's verse 3. We thank God that we should do this. This word should. What does that mean to you, that word should? You must encourage. Now it says, good reason to be thankful. Many ways to be thankful. And your faith is growing. It isn't just flat, no. It's growing. You can see the underlined word. It's growing more and more. And how? When we love each other because of our relationship with God. We continue and develop that through prayer and conversation, through reading the Bible, through your own meditation, through song. We have different ways of growing that love. And next, it says love, the underlined word love, that every one of you has for each other is also growing. We still, we go to church, we converse with each other. We read the Bible. We include Christians in our life, in our conversation. We talk about it in Bible study class or just with a group of friends of our own dinner. Or, you know, with different deaf clubs, different groups, we include our talk. And that is how our faith grows. Paul wrote, said, we have to work hard. Yeah, we do. We have to work hard at this. Until when? Jesus comes back to us. We can't just sit around idly with nothing. Say, oh, we're saved. That's it done no we work hard what does that mean to work hard maybe you're in conflict with someone disagree it's hard to solve this problem you have with someone or maybe you roll your eyes at someone you let go of a relationship you don't want to fix it you can work hard and say i'm sorry it's a lot of work though right do you have to learn to let go and know that God will take care of that person. We pray to God, do you mind taking care of this person for me? God will. Right. Forgiveness, right? And 
several years ago. I observed something at, when I was becoming a pastor. We had some situations, how we would approach these situations. How we approach a person depends on E or I. E is extrovert, that's E, and I is introvert. And do you know the difference between those two? See a show of hands? Okay, not many, okay. Extroverted, that means you tend to talk a lot, you're really engaged, social, friendly with people. That's extrovert. Now introverted tends to mean you're more quiet, more reserved, more careful, just a little bit more want to observe, discuss maybe just a little bit. That's as being introverted. And not everyone is no perfect. You're not always going to agree. Sometimes my wife is an extrovert and we'll talk and I'm like sitting there like, okay, I'm listening, I'm listening. And I've developed a lot of patience. And with being an introvert, you may notice that I can be quiet and reserved. And I am. I'm an introvert. And there can be conflict between extroverts and introverts. Extrovert is very open and willing. Introvert is a little more isolated and keeps more to themselves. And now you probably understand. Okay, we look at each other. What am I? Extrovert, introvert, who are we? You're going to kind of test it, right? Yeah, I see some people talking now. What if they are? And honestly, it can be challenging to make a conversation between extroverts and introverts. It can be a challenge. That's true. And now, now when you have a conversation, it can be a lot of work knowing that you have to navigate to make that connection, to make that relationship better. If there's a lot of social engagement going on, I might back away. And maybe you don't know the reason if you're an intro extrovert, but really, people have those tendencies. I tend to be planful and organized, make sure everything is so so, and go on in my life. Like, okay, time, we need to go, the time's up. And I'll like want to make sure everything is just perfect. Hold on one second. I'm still working, I'm still planning. And that can be a challenge. But remember, we're on God's time. That means there's no time. Encourage us to love all. Maybe we'll all get along better. There's no extrovert and introvert where God is. We need to grow in that love and understanding of each other. Growing in that love. Sometimes you might be ready to approach a person that you do not get along with. What do you do? Basic rule number one is pray. Help me, God. Help me to have this conversation, to approach this person and not fight. And I've learned to pray before I meet certain people. I think back to my experiences. And that makes us grow in love. And we continue to practice this. We continue to pray. We continue to meet with these people. You'll notice months later you that there's been a change. A weight's been lifted. Before, I didn't want to meet this person. I resisted. and I didn't want to approach them. But you're motivated to continue your conversation with God and with each other because we are all built in God's image. And that's the big difference. That resisting, it takes more energy to resist.
And that's why we see this verse growing in love. And remember that second picture, you got it right away. You saw the flowers in love growing. You know, we have more energy. Doesn't matter if you're an extrovert, an introvert, throw that out. We're growing in love together. When Jesus was here with the creation, we were excited. We were afraid too. We had fear. But we were excited that Jesus was here on earth. That energy multiplied. We didn't need an energy drink. Those hadn't been invented yet. We had our natural energy by seeing Jesus. Now, I want to show you verse 4. It says, so, the word so. You might be sick of it, you hear it, so, so, so. But this is a good meaning for so. So we tell the other churches of our God, how he is proud of you. We tell them how you patiently continue to be strong and have faith even though you are being persecuted. But we support each other. We support and encourage in love. We recently announced to the world, remember we picked five people who came up and shared. Talk about how proud they are of Jesus and receiving. They expressed their hearts to us. And that was perfect. That was beautiful. That showed love. When people came up here and shared their testimony to all of us, that was growing in faith. People weren't nervous. They came up confidently and spoke their truth. Remember Jesus is the only one, the only way, the truth, true life. As long as we continue to believe, we have hope. Do you? Do each of you have hope? Do you have it? Yes, raise your hand. Who's awkward? Who's not sure? <laughs> Let me send you to the principal's office if you don't. So when we read this, this exact message, this verse, it still applies to our lives today. When Paul wrote this letter and sent it long ago, how true this applies today to each of us and will still apply for future generations and that's amazing what the Bible teaches us. It's not an old story that's dead. No, it continues and it teaches us and we grow in love because of it. We have this relationship with God and we continue it with each, o each other. Now I want to show you the next slide as a reminder. You see this verse, 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. We love because God first loved us. God loved us first, and we love each other because of it. That message, we pass it on to others. Other people love me, I love God. There's no barriers, no obstacles. No, it's given freely. God's love through each of us. Like how Shannon, when she says hi, that's her way of saying she loves us. It's simple. Just this simple sign shows our love for each other. Talk about sisters and Lord, sisters and brothers in Christ. Cherish. Cherish enough. Do we cherish each other enough? I would say no. We can grow in our love and cherish more. In your own pace. 
how long you keep your faith growing, keep it going. And we will forgive other people. In that love, we learn to forgive more easily. Same as another verse, First John, chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. That says, allow love to others. Love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever, whoever does not love means that person does not know God. Because God is love. True? Do you agree? Amen. Good. We agree. Jesus died on the cross for our sins because he loves you. Loves all of us. And we will have eternal life because of him forever. Okay, next. Are we ready for the quiz? I'm not going to grade today. All right. Not the first picture, the first question. <laughs> I'm feeling it. I know you guys love me too. Is it true or false that the ministry of angels is mentioned in the Gospels? Is that ministry true? How many say true? Many. False? Don't know? Okay. And the answer? The answer is true. And it's from Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. And it says, All the angels are spirits who serve God and are sent to help those who will receive salvation. Good. It's clear. God truly cherishes, doesn't just handpick, cherishes everyone. We're all God's children. All right, next question. Okay. Is it true or false that Christians ought to keep the law of Moses? How many say true and false? Don't know. Don't know. Okay. This one might be a little confusing, but they'll clarify it with the answer. False. And where is this from? Galatians chapter 5, verse 18. But if you let the Spirit lead you, you are not under law. You can see the small case A in the footnote says, law here is like the law of Moses. And I can expand a little bit too. In the Bible, it says the law of Moses is what? It refers to many, many different things, many different laws and rules that were given to Moses from God. Not the Ten Commandments. There are many laws. I think 600 laws, 613 laws that we follow, but no. 
because we have accepted Jesus in our hearts. We know Jesus' reason behind things. And says also the law, we know. It's called Mosaic Law or the Torah. The Torah, the Jewish Bible. Basic Jewish laws that were traditions. So the answer is we don't. But the Ten Commandments, yes. Yes. And the third question. Is it true or false that the Bible teaches that faith is the only means of salvation? True? Raise your hand. False, raise your hand. Don't know? Don't know? Unsure? Okay. Here's the answer. Yes, true. Romans 5, verse 1. Right with God. We have been made right with God because of our faith. Faith. And that today is what we want to grow in love and grow in faith. So we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Me. Last week we signed, remember, Romans chapter 9. If we surrender, yes, to Jesus, yes, it will lift us up. He died on the cross, and God saves us. And we sign, we lift ourselves to God. Okay, next. Are we ready? I want to let you know. I'm talking about love. So we have three pictures today that all are connected with love. Are we ready? The first See if I have a picture in my wallet. Who's in here? My nephew. And God in his wallet. God has a big wallet, yes. His wallet is never ending. And he has a picture of you and you and you and you. And it continues. You know, those fold out plastic sleeves with all the photos. It's endless. Because God is proud of each of us. God is proud of you, right? You can see in the cloud the heart. Imagine how many pictures. You can't count. You can stop counting after 500. You give up. More. There's more and more. We cannot know, right? Second image. Remember that first picture we saw, the red heart with the cross inside? And that's exactly this message. It says, the shape of true love is not a heart or a diamond. It's not a diamond. Truly, it's a cross, like that cross in the heart. And that is love. And the recent picture of, yeah, yep, the heart and the cross. Do we agree? I encourage you to keep keep with it. The next picture. This one. There's two old, a couple, and the man asks, do you know what the world needs more of? And the woman says, love. And the grandfather says, no, toothpicks, but love was a good guess. 
Yeah, the world needs so much love. With our prayer, as we put our prayer requests in our collection box, we'll get an answer. But God alone knows. Natural in our country to have disagreements and feuds. It happens nationally. And then for the disasters, tornadoes, hurricanes, war, and the politics, people need love. And maybe there's not enough love. Maybe we need more, more holidays, more holidays that show that love. Okay. Come on up for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen okay before you leave before our blessings, we have the blessing. May God go before you to guide you. May he go behind you to encourage you and with you to be a friend to you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. Now our closing prayer. And we hope that you stay safe. And now you might be a little frustrated with the snow, but it's going to melt quick. And God, God's love will melt the snow. At least we won't have to shovel, right? We won't have to shovel. So I'm fine with that. But be safe. Okay. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your message today. Let us know that with Easter, we need to continue that, continue that growth, continue to grow in love with you and with all the people that surround us, our brothers and sisters, not just here at church, but everywhere, people who are watching on the live stream and Facebook and everywhere, everyone we encounter as we go through our lives. Thank you, God. Father, we don't know what people put in our prayer request box, in the world that we see, what it holds. We need more love. We need more of you. And Father, it's not easy. We struggle, but that love stays and we grow in that love. We might feel like we don't have it. As people who are sick, we come into church and we worship and pray and we are excited to see our brothers and sisters in Christ. And that shows true love. You show us true love first. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you do. We can't even imagine how much you suffered and you took away collected all of our sins, washed them away. And God was thrilled to give us hope in our lives for eternal life in your kingdom forever. Earth is just a moment. 
You made it beautiful. Your creation was made perfect. But people, politics, nations, warring. Recently saw yesterday many of the floods that are happening. You make sure that we are safe. damage that's been done with the floods but you know we know you cherish us so much in the snow but we understand that what comes from this is beauty and your design is perfect interesting how the snow changes ice changes into water the three in one just like you are the three in one and thank you it means a lot now we pray for blessings upon each of us in everyone's heart and the people watching via the live stream. Bless each of our hearts and blessings on everyone and keep everyone safe. It doesn't matter what they're doing. Walk with each of us so that we can shine on other people and they can see us and see us as Christians, as children of God because we need more love we need a voice we can't keep it inside we need to share that light share that spirit the more love the more it grows we will not allow evil to win we will stay and say thank you to every one of us until we see you until next week when we gather again and learn more from the Bible. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you always.